Hello, my friends. Welcome to PMP Exam Data Flow Summaries. In the previous episodes, I showed you quality management and how to think about quality management, how to think for your PMP exam and all the different interconnections that lead to an event and how that event could branch out into other events. So today, we'll take a look at data flow summaries from one of the knowledge areas. Now, this is based on the book, which you can get from tinyurl.com forward slash PMP vision. It's my book called PMP Exam Vision. It's all about visualizing the PMBOK guide and making it stick by converting the ITTOs into images, by converting the names of tools and techniques, especially into images, so that as you study, you see an image, it rings a bell. The ITTOs begin to stick. Because I always get the question, Phil, how do I memorize or cram ITTOs? And in my mind, being more aware of ITTOs involves deliberate thinking, trying to remember images or examples of those ITTOs, maybe even templates of those ITTOs. So in this book, I give you a lot of vis visual ideas, visual stimulation to get you to the point where you've seen it in an image, you anchor that name back to the image, it sticks more easily. I'll show you what I mean. You can also get a soft copy of the book. The soft copy looks a little bit different, but it has the same context. It's called Critical Tools and Outputs, PMP Exam Fix. So let's start off with one of the concepts here. Very basic concept, plan procurement management. Now, as you study plan procurement management, the inputs, you know, you know the drill in the sixth edition, the inputs are so repetitive at a high level. You've got project management plan, you can expect to find EEFs and OPAs in most of them, project documents, all that stuff. You've seen that on previous processes. So the inputs are not the major challenge. It's not. What is the major challenge is the tools and the techniques. Being able to recall what are those tools and techniques. So for example, in plan procurement management, we first of all want to get down, what are we getting out of this process? You can see we're getting a procurement management plan. And then the question becomes, how did I get that? What tools and techniques did I use? So I like to think about the outputs. What's in it for me? What is in it for me, the project manager or the sponsor or the customer? Why do I care about this process? And that's how I want you to think about it. Why do I care about plan procurement management? What value is it? Oh, it gives me a procurement management plan. Oh, it gives me source selection criteria. Oh, procurement strategy, something else it gives me. Now, why did I choose this one? I chose this one because it's a bad boy, this one. Why do I say it's bad? There are seven unique outputs from plan procurement management. Seven. Think about that. How does a student studying 49 processes spend so much time on just understanding the outputs for 49 without it hurting. <laughs> That's why I created this system to help you. So I created this visual system to give you some visualization to remember the seven outputs that are unique and not to talk about others that are repetitive from this one process. You see what I'm saying? So as you cover the content in this system, you have the visualization. Some of you remember stuff because you've seen it in a particular color or you've seen it look in a particular way. This is for people like that, visual learners. If you're a visual learner, this will help you, okay? So that's source selection criteria, bid documents. Remember those? If you've read um, procurement statement of work. So, so far, these are five. Just take a look. They're all mounting up already. You see that? We already have five. They're mounting up. In addition to the procurement statement of work, we've got make or buy decisions, which are, of course, connected to make or buy analysis. We'll take a look at that soon. Um, and then we've got independent cost estimates. So, so when you take a look at just the outputs, it could give you a run for your time as you're going through the content. Okay? So little introduction to each of these. The procurement management plan is a plan for how to manage the procurements. The contracts, 
that you will use and so on could be touched on to some degree. But ultimately, it is how are we going to manage procurement on the project? But that's not the only thing you get from the process. You get source selection criteria, criteria used for selection of sellers, for scoring proposals and things like that. The procurement strategy, which goes into further detail about not just the contract types, but really the vehicles that you will use. Will it be a build, owner, operate, transfer? Will it be a design build? Will it be a design bid build, a DBB? Or in the case of administrative type of projects that are not construction, how will those be? Are we allowed to have a vendor uh, in between us and someone else? Or is it just us and the customer? And things such as that. It gets very detailed. And all those contract types are not in the PMBOK guide, but I would advise you if you're getting ready for the exam, kind of be familiar with things like the, like the boot type arrangements, uh, DBB, um, and, and so on in the world of construction, just in case, you never know. But that's the procurement strategy. We have bid documents, RFPs, RFQs, RFIs, IFNs, things like that, invitation for negotiation, request for bid, documents like that. That's what that is referring to. Procurement statement of work is a statement of work written so that the prospective sellers understand what needs to be done. This is different from a much wider statement of work, which is not really referred to anymore in the PMBOK guide. It used to be, but now they've, they've tailored it just to say procurement statement of work, which typically accompanies the bid documents. Then we've got make or buy decisions. These are decisions that we take to either make something ourselves or to buy it external. And last but not least, we have independent cost estimates, and we use these to vet and validate the bids that come in, just to make sure that our idea of what the bid should cost, the area, the ballpark figure that it should cost, tallies with what the prospective sellers are going to submit. So we could have a third party that goes through what we want to do and comes up with a ballpark amount and as we get those bids in, we can check them against the independent cost estimates. So imagine that. That's just the outputs. But another challenge is knowing the tools and techniques. The tools and techniques could be a challenge. Let's take a look at some of the... Oh, and of course, change requests. How could I forget change requests? Now, change request is not unique, but it is important. And that's why it's number eight. So I said there were seven unique ones. Change request is not unique, but it is important because it's an anomaly. Because in plan procurement management, this is a planning process. But what do you know? You got change requests. So this doesn't happen a lot, but it happens in a few of the processes. We also see this in defined activities, change requests. You wouldn't have imagined to see it in planning, but there it is. And I call these unique aspects out in the book. So all of these, they are rather unique. This is an anomaly, so I call it out as well. But let's go into the tools and techniques. So I use images to convey tools and techniques so that it sticks. So let me see if you guys can guess what each one is. So the lady with the glasses, some of you watched my videos before, you've seen her expert judgment. We have got a binder a folder. What are we doing? We are gathering data. What are we doing here? Well, this one, we are doing something to analyze. Sounds familiar. Data analysis. This one, what are we doing here? We'll find out. <laughs> I'll let you open up your PMBOK guide and go through the tools and techniques and tell me, hmm, what is that? Okay. And this. They seem to be having a kind of conversation, a discussion. If you go through your PMBOK guide, you'll make sense. You'll realize what this represents. So what I usually advise students to do as they use this system is to cover the middle, <laughs> the middle here, and take a look at the tools and techniques don't take a look at the middle of the book yet. You're trying to jog your memory, similar to what I was doing in the beginning when we were looking at the tools and techniques, to see if you can 
join each of these pictures to a concept. So the lady expert judgment, data gathering, data analysis, but beyond that, what do you think these two represent? If you open up your PEMBOK guide, let's find out. So we have a list of things here. We have expert judgment, we have data gathering, we have data analysis, but this one right here is source selection analysis. So once you've seen it, boom, it sticks. Source selection, this is that. And as you continue reading the content, the image is gonna stick in your head. You're gonna be like, I've seen that before. What is it, what is it, what is it? And then it sticks a lot better. And this one that you see over here, what are they doing? They're having a meeting. So that is how this study system works. It's a book. Again, if you really wanted to study with me in this curriculum, you need to go to tinyurl.com forward slash PMP vision. You see that? tinyurl.com forward slash PMP vision. That's where you need to go. And um, if you wanted to, let me get out of the way so you can see it, PMP vision. Um, you, you can actually get this um, soft copy as well. So if you wanted to get the soft copy, the soft copy is the same link, but with the number one, tinyurl.com forward slash PMP vision one. And this is really just the beginning of the curriculum because it's very robust. I'd like to go through one more piece of it with you just to give you guys further clarity on uh, what the system looks like. So this is just the beginning. Going further, we bring together different processes in a knowledge area and show the interconnection points. So I really want to spend some time showing you an example here. So take, for example, project procurement management as a knowledge area. It starts off with plan procurement management. Plan procurement management interconnects with develop project management plan. You may say how? Well, there's a feedback loop from develop project management plan into plan procurement management, as you guys already know from your studying. But there's also another feedback loop from down here, from perform integrated change control. We have a line, as you can see, conveying that change request that I showed you, that change request is gonna go into perform integrated change control. So that unique relationship is called out, as you can see. We also have conduct procurements interacting with plan procurement management in that we have the procurement bid documents, statement of work, independent cost estimates, and source selection criteria. You can see all of those go in to conduct procurements. So if you do not pay close attention to those seven things I showed you, and you're not taking account of each one, and you're not looking in the guide, it's easy to miss this. And that's why in this solution, I'm trying to show you the bid documents you get, the procurement statement of work you get, the independent cost estimates you get, the source selection criteria that you get, and the make or buy decisions you get, they are all going to conduct procurements. You see that? So I look at all of these together as procurement documentation. So this procurement documentation is going to conduct procurements. And these are relationships. This type of relationship, you typically do not pay attention to it as you're reading the PEMBOK guide. But in this curriculum, I call it out for you. Let's talk about this next one here, control procurements and the interaction between control procurements and conduct procurements. Well, conduct procurements, as you can see, is going to give agreements to control procurements. It's an input, but we derive agreements after a contract has been signed, that becomes an input to control procurements. There's also an interconnection point between conduct procurements and estimate activity resources. It's resource calendars. Resource calendars are talked about in a few places. But the place we see this first is estimate activity resources. Someone said, Phil, 
why are resource calendars shown as going in to estimate activity resources a few days ago? And I said, you've got to remember, it's an iterative thing. This is one of those points in the cycle where you're going to get resource calendars going into a process that you also get other resource calendars which are used for the internal team. So again, back to that interconnection, that, that interconnectedness that happens in the PMBOK guide. It's hard to work it out without someone showing it to you. And that's why I break all this stuff down in this book. We have acquire resources leading back into estimate activity resources with resource calendars as well. So I, I, but the question, to, to paraphrase the question, I, I think I got that wrong. The question was, why are resource calendars coming in here um, and at the same time coming out of here? So this underscores it again. You can see resource calendars coming out, going to estimate activity resources, but you can see resource calendars going in here as well from a different direction. So resource calendars come from acquire resources, but they also come from conduct procurements as well. So you can see a lot of interconnection points, things flowing into one place. Estimate activity resources, getting resource calendars from two places is what this shows you. Uh, the procurement documentation also goes into control procurements. We have from control procurements, WPI as we have from many other processes, WPI goes into monitor and control project work. We also have work performance reports coming from monitor and control project work. They're not really doing anything here, but it is good to, to know that they go into performing a graded change control. So you can see work performance reports going in here to perform a grade change control. And that's in a different knowledge area, but it is good to see in the bigger picture how all these things interconnect and flow. We also have change requests uh, going into the same process, going once again into perform integrated change control. So you can see this is a very involved map showing you so much information I could go on and on. We have direct and manage project work. Direct and manage project work is feeding you, as you can see here, with work performance data. And that work performance data is what becomes the work performance information and that eventually becomes work performance reports. We can also see this interconnection here between control procurements and PICC. What are we getting? Approved change requests. This is another one that people miss, but approved change requests need to become an input to control procurement because we need to carry out the change request. Also, from control procurements, we get a feedback loop of the change requests themselves. So these are two very important aspects. You can see approved change requests going in here, and we can see change requests as well uh, going in to perform integrated change control. There is so much stuff happening here, many interconnection points. Here's another one going into direct and manage project work. You can see we also have approved change requests that is used here as well. So by the time you go through this system and you study all of these pieces, all of these points, over and over again, it will begin to stick. It will begin to stick. And you, you have the luxury of looking at a page for as long as you like and maybe even marking up the page if you will. You know, using post-it notes, sticky notes to write notes regarding your findings. But by the time you're done, you will have such a robust collection of information. Here again, we can see change requests going from direct to manage project work once again. And like I said, my friends, you want to get the book, PMP Exam Vision. Um, it's been around for a while, but I, I just realized a lot of you may not know about it. Okay, so get the hard copy um, at tinyurl.com forward slash PMP Vision or get the soft copy, tinyurl.com forward slash PMP Vision 1. And um, if you are getting ready for the exam and you need help, you need training, coaching, go to praiseon.com. That's the website to go to. Praiseon.com will help you. Let me show you one more process here. Collect requirements. These tools and techniques, we've talked about these. Do you remember what these three are? I'm sure you remember at least one. You remember that one, right? The lady with the glasses. 
expert judgment, the folder, data gathering, this data analysis. But I show you some really interesting images. Should I go X or should I go Y? This looks like a display of something. And these people look rather happy. And this is a sort of flow. This is some sort of widget, gadget, robot. <laughs> and here are the answers. So you got the first three because we've talked about that before. But the robot with the X and Y or tick and X, that is decision making. We've got data representation in this chart here. These folks look happy into personal and team skills. And then we've got the context diagram, which shows you how data goes in and out of a system. And we've got prototypes, early feedback, a robot, uh, prototypes. And uh, the outputs of the process, requirements, documentation, and requirements traceability matrix. So again, my friends, if you have found this to be interesting and you really want to get this content, like I said, the place to go is tinyurl.com forward slash PMP vision and tinyurl.com forward slash PMP vision one for both the hard copy and the soft copy. Okay, thanks for joining me. I hope this uh, gives you an idea of what you can do to study, especially if ITTOs has been an issue for you. A lot of you say, Phil, the ITTOs. Well, now you know what to do. I got a lot of questions about a book I wrote for the fifth edition called PMP IQ Test Workbook. Unfortunately, that is not available for this edition, majorly because PMI changed the format of the ITTO so drastically, it did not make sense uh, creating another version of the book based on what they did. But the open-ended questions in my live face-to-face -face training, those open-ended questions that were in the book, I make those available um, in my face-to-face -face training. All right, so thank you very much. I look forward to speaking to you soon and seeing you get the curriculum to help you in your prep. Bye for now.